Uh, so my talk is going to be on why change is not an event, it's a skill. So what I'd like you to do just at the start of this talk is just to think about a change you desire in your life. Maybe that's something you want at work, or maybe that's something you've got at home. And as I go through this talk today and share some of these thoughts, I'd like you to keep in the back of your mind how what I'm sharing with you might relate to the change that you desire in your life. So who am I? Uh, so Vlad, very, uh, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so I work as a coach, um, a professional coach for the International Coaching Federation. I help people and products uh, succeed. Um, a little known fact about me is I've performed at Glastonbury Music Festival for any music fans uh, from the UK on the call. And as Vlad said, I ship content to help you and your organization improve at tobysinclair.com. Uh, if you scan the QR code, you'll actually get taken to a link where you can access a lot of my materials. And I'll touch on that at the end. I do have a free five-day leadership habits program, which will allow you to put into practice a lot of what we're talking about today. So the key thing here that I'd like to bring up first is this idea that a lot of the time we have this event-driven thinking with change. We believe that if X happens, then Y will happen. And I see this a lot in the work that I do in organizations and with people is this idea that, for example, when that leader goes on scrum training, they'll finally get it. Or, for example, once I move to that new job, I'll be happy. So this thinking uh, goes through a lot of how we see change. And it's a bit of a challenge, I think. When I was training as a professional coach uh, with the wonderful Barefoot Coaches about four years ago now, I think, um, I went into that kind of program with this view around life, like kind of professional coaches like Tony Robbins that help you get to this dramatic transformational moment where suddenly your life changes. And we see this terminology used throughout coaching and also in organizations about these transformations and these events that suddenly things are going to be better. Whereas I think I've come to learn that change actually happens in a slightly different way. It's not to say that these kind of transformational moments don't happen. It's just that I th feel that we can be more successful if we look at change in a different way. I was looking for quotes that are kind of express the way I see change. And I came across this really nice quote that I think encapsulates this idea that a lot of the time, change is this gradual thing that sneaks up on us. And we don't actually realize that it's happened until we've kind of spent the time working on ourselves. And suddenly we realize things have, have, have changed. And that's really the focus of today's talk is this kind of gradual kind of change rather than the big transformational moments. So BJ Fogg, the author of Tiny Habits, has a really nice way to describe how behavior change happens. And he says that change happens in three ways. We can have an epiphany, change our environment, or change habits in tiny ways. And the talk today is really focusing on the last two. Like I said, epiphanies and big moments can happen in our lives, but they're usually few and far between. And for us to be successful with change, we have much better success if we focus on changing our environment or changing our habits in tiny ways. And this really also connects to something called the locus of control, which is this idea that when we think about this kind of event-driven change, I think we tend to fall into this kind of external locus of control. Your life happens to you rather than due to you. Whereas instead, I have a big belief that change can happen if we shift our, our locus of control to being more about we determine our own fate. And in today's talk, I'll be sharing skills that you can put into practice that allows you to create change within your life and within your organizations by shifting away from an event-driven change to something where the skills that you can develop that puts you in control of the change that happens. So the first skill is really around environment change. And this is something that I call environment hacking. And this is a skill that you can develop to shape your environment so they better suit the goals that you have in mind. 
So we all know that our environments have changed dramatically over the last 12 months through working from home. And for many people, it's been a bit of a challenge, right? And we've had to adapt and learn new ways of shaping our environments. And I believe the most successful people during this time are those that are focused on building this as a skill. Instead of being a victim to their environments, what they've actually done is they've learned to shape their environment so they can work effectively, achieve their goals, and maintain a healthy, well-balanced life. Uh, in the book, Good Habits, Bad Habits, which you can find a book summary, as Vlad said, I'm very famous for my book summaries. Um, Wendy Wood talked about this idea that the most successful people that can make positive changes that stick in their lives are those not with self-control, but those with situational control, which is those people that are able to shape, design, and adjust their environment based upon their goals and the things they want to achieve in life. And I strongly believe this is a skill that you can develop, which allows you to be successful and make changes that stick. So, uh, and then one really example, a good example of this is from professional chefs. So there's this phrase called, uh, my French is not good, so mise en place, which translated roughly means, what do I need to make this? And professional chefs design their kitchens for all, like automatic thinking. So what they do is they prepare their ingredients so that once they come to make their meal, um, they've got everything they need. So they design the environment. And we see this in places like McDonald's as well, uh, where the environment is designed for that automatic behaviors. So they've taken the efforts to experiment and design their environment to match their goals. And just some examples from my, my own life. Uh, I'm actually sat down now, but this is my uh, DIY standing desk that I built after getting a really bad uh, back pain early on in lockdown. I've actually stuck with this uh, since. And there's actually a yoga mat on the bottom, which is actually cropped off, which I, I need to use now because my feet hurt. Um, another example I've done recently is walking talks. So I actually got to the point where, like everyone, I was complaining about Zoom fatigue. I wasn't doing anything about it. So I decided to shape my environment. So rather than be a victim of my environment, I decided to take things into my own hands. So I'm now doing regular phone calls, which seems quite strange now to actually phone someone, not to talk to them on video. Uh, but another example where you can start to experiment with your environment. And another one is uh, just adjusting meeting minutes. So I try and do 20, 25 minute meetings. And it's amazing what you can do with those five, 10 minutes. Uh, you can even have a, uh, a break for a kickback. And I thought that was a very uh, interesting uh, marketing uh, that I saw on LinkedIn actually a, a while back. Um, so I think the example here is around how building these skills of experimenting with your environment allows you to be more successful. And it's my belief that the rate of change is directly influenced by the rate at which you experiment with your environment. So if you're not experimenting with your environment, it's likely that the rate of change will be lower. And I think that applies to organizations too in the fact that we often focus on the processes and the practices, but don't experiment enough with the environment in which we work. So one thing for you to consider is what's one thing that you can do to hack your environment? So the next skill is what I call habit hacking. So this is really based upon the idea that for anything to change, someone has to start acting differently. And what this, where this is important, I think, for agile coaches and coaches in general is that we need to be experts in behavior change, how behavior happens and the factors that influence it. And often within the agile community, I think we often put a lot of focus on agile frameworks, but not enough on the fundamentals of how behavior happens. And I think by understanding that, that can have dramatic impacts on our personal and professional lives. And it's, it's very interesting that Basil mentioned earlier that this kind of model as well, which is typically we have a kind of this old model that in order to change our behavior, we need to change our thinking. This model comes from someone called John Shook, who was the first American manager to work for a Toyota. And what he observed is actually they looked at it very differently in the fact that to change thinking, you need to change behavior. 
So if you want to change the culture of your organization, you need to focus on how you change behavior to change that thinking. So what that means is how does behavior happen? So the best model I found to, to kind of describe how behavior happens is something called the fog behavior model. It's from a book called Tiny Habits. And again, uh, you can find a book somewhere on my uh, website for that if you scan the QR code. Um, and the fog behavior model basically says that behavior happens when motivation, ability, and prompt converge at the same moment. And the real key takeaway from this model is the way to make behavior change happen is to make it as easy as possible. We often put a lot of emphasis on motivation and motivating people to change, or maybe add in reminders and visual cues in the environment. The reality is if the behavior is not as easy as it could be to begin with, behavior change will not happen. And I think it's certainly a reflection in the work that I've done within organizations and with individuals is often I've worked with them on changes that have been just too difficult to begin with. And that hasn't resulted in a sustained change. So as agile coaches, I think we need to think about how can we make the change as easy as possible initially so that that can start to grow and form into new habits. And there's a few ways you can do this. Like everything in our kind of agile world, experimentation is key. And there's a few dials here that you can experiment with in terms of time. How can you make the time shorter? How can you reduce the amount of physical or mental effort? So a great way to think about these behaviors is how can you run experiments to make the behavior easier to do? Once you do that, you're more likely that the behavior change will happen. And then over time, they'll form into new habits. Another example from my personal life uh, is uh, book summaries. Uh, so I actually started about a year ago, maybe a little bit more, uh, with a habit around doing one sentence book summaries. So I made it as easy as possible and wrote a book summary on a post-it note. And literally, like, it's amazing that once you plant a behavior in the right spot, it kind of grows without coaxing. Fast forward a year, and I've actually done, I think, about 40, uh, 40 or so books, so de quite detailed book summaries now, which you can also find on my website. I feel like I'm plugging these book summaries a lot in this session. Um, but that's kind of just grown as a kind of habit. Um, I'm very excited to get to my 50th book summary. Um, I need to do a big celebration for that. Um, but it's just an example where if you start really small and grow that habit over time, it's amazing how uh, that will happen. The only challenge I think a lot of people struggle with is the time aspect. Very few people uh, would stick to a habit for a long period of time, but it's really consistency over time that delivers the results. So the, another key thing here, in addition to ch experiment the environment, is my belief that the rate of change is strongly influenced by the rate at which you can build or break habits. So what that means as coaches and agile coaches is we need to become experts in how habits form and how we start to build and break them. Our ability to work with people on changing those habits is a huge influence on the rate of change that occurs. So the other question for you to think about is how can you make behavior easier to do? So thinking back to the goals you had at the start of this talk, think about what, what one hack can you do to your environment to make it more aligned to that change? And how can you think about a behavior that can help you move towards that change? And how could you make that as easy to do as possible? So in summary, instead of thinking about the event-driven change, Think about if I develop change skills, then I'll be ready for any why. And as I said, if you want to go further in the, how habits work, how to build them, how to break them, and also then how to apply that in an organizational setting, uh, go to my website forward slash habits. And I've got a five day email based program that you'll be able to put into practice in very tiny five minute exercises, how to build new habits. And that's it from me.